Chances are, you used your fingers to open this video. But have you ever thought about how your sausage fingers can open YouTube videos, or do whatever you do when no one is watching? If your answer is disruptions of electric fields, well, you are not wrong. The history of touchscreens goes way, way longer than you expect them to. I know you probably were not expecting 1965, but Johnson, my guy from England, came up with the wildest idea back then. It was to develop this magical object we refer to as the touchscreen. Even if capacitive touchscreens were the first to be invented, resistive touchscreens had the crown. Now you are probably asking, what the heck is he talking about? There are two types of touchscreens. Well, not really. But for now, let's say there are only two, the resistive and capacitive touchscreens. Even though my boy Johnson first came up with the capacitive touchscreens, resistive touchscreens surpassed them, which were invented in the USA by A.G., named Samuel Hearst, which was almost an accident. So what is the difference between the two? While you need to hit the gym to use the resistive touchscreen, your spaghetti arms can use the capacitive. Let me explain. The resistive touchscreen works by detecting touch through physical pressure. Here is how it works. There are two layers on this touchscreen. Flexible top layer, rigid bottom layer, and insulating dots in the middle. Both layers have indium tin oxide, known as the ITO coating, and when the two layers are pressed together, the controller determines the X and Y coordinates where the two layers touch. And that's how resistive touchscreens works. On the other hand, we have capacitive touchscreen for your spaghetti arms. Unlike resistive touchscreens, they don't need pressure. They work by detecting touch through changes in the electrical field caused by the conductive properties of your sausage fingers. Meaning, a human body has electrical properties that disrupt the electric fields on the screen when in contact. Just like the resistive touchscreen, the capacitive touchscreen has different layers. First, we have our protective glass, which does what its name suggests obviously. Then there is the electrode layer made of transparent conductor, which is ITO again. The electrodes are arranged in a grid pattern, and a small voltage is applied to them. When we continue the road, we have the dialecting layer, which is a fancy way of saying insulator. And we have another layer of transparent conductor, arranged in a similar grid pattern. As good as these two are, they are not the only touch sensors to exist. We have surface acoustic wave touchscreens, which use ultrasonic waves. Infrared touchscreens, which use infrared beams. Optical touchscreens, which use infrared light sensors, and others. But how did we go from Hertz popular resistive touch, to our boy's capacitive one? Well, in 2007, Apple was the first company to create, the first commercially successful smartphone with full touch interface and played a big role on making it mainstream, which then shortly grew into different businesses. And just like that, one of the greatest inventions was invented. If you enjoyed this, you know what to do. We are Strange Dose, and this is your dose of strange.